is there a movie or something that I was supposed to be a part yes. of? A collaboration? Yeah, uh, David Geffen uh, reached out to me to be uh, in Dreamgirls. And um, it, yeah, man, it just didn't happen. And I, had, I think everybody hit me about this joint too. I had Eddie Murphy hit me, man, Brandy hit me. Just, there's never just, there's always a reason. You don't get in your car and just sit there. You go to the grocery there store. There you go, bro. Or you drive, to, the, you drive to, to a concert. I know. You turn that down. Yeah, uh, I didn't do it. Santa, did you know about this? <laughs> I didn't know about this one. <laughs> yeah. Drink to that. <laughs> I read that you were <laughs> Beyonce's nanny. Were you Beyonce's nanny? First of all, how can I be a nanny? I'll be a manny. Man, I bet you know what I mean. No, no, no I wouldn't I wouldn't be on Six Nanny. Nah, um, Daryl Simmons, uh, he had a group by the name of the Dolls. Okay. And they came to Atlanta for the first time. This is when this is before Destiny's Child became Destiny's okay. Child. And um I think I looked over them while they were doing something in the house. I had to watch them because I was like the you, you know, the authority, because I guess I was the, the teenager right. at the time. But no, nah, I wasn't a nanny, you know what I'm saying? No. But you were just overseeing them, like, making sure they ain't breaking nothing. Making certain that they didn't, you know, that they didn't get in no trouble in the house at the time. Yeah. Did you see, did you know that little girl was going to grow up to be that big international superstar? Can you look at, because you did discover Justin Bieber, so you did see something. So clearly you got an eye for talent. Yeah, well, not, and not just by myself. There was a, a host of people, you know, they say... Success has a million fathers and an orphan, you know, you know, yeah, you got it. So um, I think when I saw them, I knew there was something very special about all of them because as Destiny's Child, they all thrive. Even still to this day, when you see them and you see them together, they all thrive. They all are an incredible unit. Mm -hmm. Beyonce uh, had a talent and also too a brilliance and a brightness that was much different. And it was actually uh, Frank Gatson, Gatson who, who helped me see it. He, he worked with me at the time. He was my choreographer and then he started working with them. Okay. And he'd always told me, man, like she's really special. You need to keep your eye on her. I was like, man, she is, she is really special. Um, and really great for my sister, man, to see that she's done so amazing and continue to, to thrive and, and just get bigger and better and just, you know, just, I mean, whether it's musically or in our life or creativity, all of it, man. How is it working being on the stage with Michael Jackson? Because he's, I mean, if you're in this business. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, um, you know, so I'm in my seat and um, his manager comes over to me and he says, yo, you're gonna dance with Michael tonight. I'm like, I'm watching the show. What the heck do you mean I'm getting ready to dance with Michael? So he's like, no, come backstage. I'm like, first of all, I ain't got my Air Force Ones and I'm in boots. I can't dance in boots. So I'm like, oh my God. So now I'm going crazy. I'm backstage running around, you know, asking. I was asking like the people on the street, Red like, yo, like, you got yo, I literally left, bro. And I ran outside down the street asking somebody for some shoes. Give me some Air Force Ones. And he, it was like wallabies and like some <laughs> new balances. I was like, nah, that ain't gonna get it. I need Air Force One. <laughs> so I come back in, I ain't got my Air Force Ones. I have some like, some boots. So anyway, I went out there. So y'all see me tip, like, I'm, I look a little, I'm stuck a little bit. <laughs> that, that's really what happened. Uh, but no, I was, it was nerve wracking to actually dance for and with Michael. Uh, I can remember uh, rehearsals and I mean, I don't normally go all out in rehearsals, dude. I was going all out, singing at the top of my lungs, dancing harder than I've ever danced, sweating, flying all over the room. He was like, man, you really have a talent. That was one of the greatest compliments that I could ever get. Wow. He says to me, you not only sing, but you dance. To, I know how hard that is. You sing and you dance. That combination is vicious. That might, is that the greatest compliment you received? He didn't say vicious, but he said you dance <laughs> and sing. I'm, just, I'm, I'm putting two on the ten. Right. He said that that that's a really special talent, and um, it, it really felt good to get that compliment from him. Well, you know, ATL, we running the music game, right? Absolutely. Now. We on top of the world. Yo. <laughs> How does that? Because you're part of that. Yes. I mean, you can't you can't tell the story of Atlanta music without mentioning. Usher Raymond. No, man. Mm -mm. How did that make you feel? Man, we did something, man. The Ace, man, listen, the South got something to say is what Dre said, and we've been saying it for a long time. 
you know, and, and, and the potency of that. You know, I think that I think it's great. I think more than anything, again, there's this transition and this focus just for me. And I think it should be a focus for more artists, you know what I'm saying? To really focus on the other things that these genres or Southern music and entertainment breeds. There's an, there's an entire movement and feeling when you come to Atlanta. Right. Right? The world needs to know that. That's why I brought Atlanta to Las Vegas. Wow. You need to understand it. No different. Like you look at Cirque du Soleil and right. all of those shows, mm -hmm. right? They celebrate their culture, whether mm -hmm. it's in Spain or wherever it is. Our culture is the same. It might not be marketed the same. It might not feel, oh, because it's culture. But all cultural things eventually become something that's commercial. And I wanted the world to be able to see and celebrate who we are, how we get out, what our music feels like, what our energy is, what our experience is, you know? Two-part question. Yep. It's R&B dead. And will R&B ever be what it once was at the height? I'm talking about at the height, 90s, early 2000s, it was. Will it ever be that again? So long as we um, quantify the success of it uh, as a number one spot that has to be garnered in order to consider R&B the biggest thing, I don't know. <clears throat> That's in question for the world. Mm -hmm. Um, musically, I think that R&B is in everything. See, I ain't no fool. I understand where it all comes from. I right. understand the source. Right. Maybe y'all don't understand the source. Maybe you don't understand that it's gospel, blues, R&B, and everything flowed upward from there. So, no, it's gonna forever be a source. Uh, will it be and have potency for the entire world to celebrate? I believe so, and I'm gonna continue to fight for it. I'm gonna continue to be that conduit for it. Uh, as I said, man, it's a king that I'm, kingdom that I'm after. I want the world to understand the value of what this music is, not just the service of it. Yeah, you put it on to make love. Yeah, you put it on to celebrate good times. Yeah, you put it on to emote and have emotions, but it also too serves so many other things that we gotta celebrate as well, you know? Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.